On April 3rd, 1974, nature assembled the perfect atmospheric weapon. By the time the violence ended, 148 tornadoes had carved paths of destruction across 13 states, leaving 335 people dead and thousands more injured. Seven of these storms achieved the ultimate classification of F5. Multiple tornadoes had winds exceeding 300 miles per hour, capable of literally wiping communities off the map. This was the 1974 super outbreak, and it remains the most violent and devastating tornado outbreak in recorded history. Hello, and welcome to Deadliest Disasters. The meteorological stage for catastrophe began setting itself days before the first funnel cloud touched down. A massive low pressure system was slowly organizing over the central United States, drawing together atmospheric ingredients that would create what forecasters now recognize as a textbook severe weather setup. The first critical component was an unusually strong upper-level jet stream, racing eastward at speeds exceeding 100 mile per hour across the northern tier of states. This river of fast-moving air created powerful wind shear. Simultaneously, a potent surface low pressure system was intensifying over the Great Plains, creating a dramatic temperature gradient across the central United States. To the south, more moisture-laden air from the Gulf of Mexico was being drawn northward, with surface temperatures climbing into the 70s and 80s across much of the Ohio Valley and southeast. Meanwhile, a sharp cold front extending from the low pressure center separated this tropical-like air mass from much cooler, drier air to the west. The third crucial ingredient was atmospheric instability. The warm, humid air near the surface was being capped by cooler air aloft, creating what meteorologists call a loaded gun atmosphere. When this cap would eventually break, the explosive release of energy would be unprecedented. By April 2nd, the National Weather Service recognized the potential for a significant severe weather event. However, even the most experienced forecasters could not have anticipated the scale of destruction that was about to unfold. The technology of 1974 was primitive compared to today's sophisticated Doppler radar and computer modeling systems. Weather prediction relied heavily on surface observations, upper air balloon readings, and the experienced eyes of meteorologists who had pieced together the atmospheric puzzle with far fewer tools than their modern counterparts. As dawn broke on April 3rd, the atmosphere was coiled like a spring under enormous tension. The first tornado touched down at 1 p.m. near Morris, Illinois, but this was merely the opening act of nature's violent symphony. Within hours, supercell thunderstorms were exploding across a vast area stretching from the Great Lakes to the Gulf Coast. What made the super outbreak unique wasn't just the number of tornadoes, but their extraordinary intensity and longevity. Many of the storms maintained their violent character for hours, carving continuous paths of destruction across multiple states. The atmospheric conditions were so favorable for tornado development that some supercells spawned multiple tornadoes in succession, creating what witnesses described as tornado factories that seemed to regenerate themselves continuously. Seven tornadoes during the outbreak achieved F5 status. These weren't just powerful storms, they were atmospheric monsters capable of incredible destruction, some with wind speeds estimated between 300 to 318 mile per hour, some of the strongest ever seen on Earth. Perhaps no single tornado from the super outbreak is better remembered than the F5 that devastated Xenia, Ohio. At approximately 4.40 p.m., residents of this quiet community of 25,000 noticed the sky taking on an ominous greenish hue, a color that veteran storm chasers now recognize as a harbinger of violence. The Xenia tornado was a perfect specimen of F5 fury, measuring nearly half a mile wide at its peak and maintaining maximum intensity for much of its 32-mile path. When it struck the heart of Xenia, the tornado moved through the city like a buzzsaw, completely destroying entire neighborhoods and leaving behind a scene that rescue workers would later compare to a nuclear bomb blast. The Arrowhead subdivision bore the brunt of the storm's fury. 
Here, well-built homes weren't just destroyed, they were obliterated so completely that investigators had difficulty determining where some houses had once stood. The tornado's winds were so violent that it literally scoured the foundations clean, leaving only empty lots scattered with unrecognizable debris. The tornado's path through Xenia's downtown business district was equally devastating. The historic courthouse, built in 1900 and considered one of the most beautiful buildings in southwestern Ohio, was reduced to rubble in seconds. The Kroger supermarket, where dozens of shoppers had taken shelter, saw its roof peeled away like the lid of a tin can. Remarkably, most of the people inside survived, though many were pelted by debris and severely injured. The final toll in Xenia was staggering, 32 people killed, over 1,000 injured, and more than half the city damaged or completely destroyed. The tornado had carved a path of complete devastation through the heart of the community, leaving 10,000 people homeless and causing damages exceeding $200 million in 1974 dollars. Shortly after the Xenia F5, the small community of Tanner, Alabama was about to face an almost unimaginable scenario. Being struck by not one, but two F5 tornadoes within hours of each other. This unprecedented double hit would virtually erase the town from the map and create some of the most heartbreaking survival stories of the entire outbreak. The first F5 tornado struck Tanner at approximately 6.15 p.m., roaring through the community who had little time to prepare. The tornado was particularly vicious because it struck during the evening hours when most families were at home, unaware of the approaching danger. Warning systems of 1974 were primitive by today's standards, and many residents were completely caught off guard. The first F5 tornado was on the ground for a staggering 1 hour and 15 minutes and left 28 fatalities and 267 injuries. The second tornado was even more powerful than the first. It struck the already devastated community about an hour after the first one, creating what meteorologists would later describe as one of the most violent tornado events ever documented. The second storm finished what the first had started, obliterating what little remained of Tanner's buildings and infrastructure. The second tornado was on the ground for an hour and a half and it left 16 fatalities and almost 200 injured. The double strike created scenes of almost biblical devastation. Rescue workers arriving from nearby Huntsville described a landscape that looked like it had been carpet bombed. There were no standing structures visible in the tornado's path. No walls, no roofs, no trees. Even the foundations of buildings had been scoured clean in many areas. And the human cost of the double strike was catastrophic. Of Tanner's small population, 44 in total were killed and nearly everyone else was injured to some degree. The community's school, church, post office, and every single business were completely destroyed. Most tragically, entire families were wiped out, leaving no one to tell their stories. One man helping with rescue efforts said, quote, We couldn't even tell where the roads had been. Everything was just gone. We found pieces of houses miles away mixed up with pieces from other houses. But what really got to me was finding children's toys scattered everywhere. A teddy bear here, a bicycle there, and knowing that some of these kids didn't make it, end quote. About an hour later, a F5 tornado struck Gwynn, Alabama at 9.30 p.m. It was notable not only for its incredible violence, but also for the remarkable resilience shown by the community in its aftermath. Gwynn, a small town of about 2,000 people, took a direct hit from one of the most powerful tornadoes of the entire outbreak. The Gwynn tornado was exceptional even among F5 storms for its size and longevity. At its peak, the tornado was over three quarters of a mile wide, a massive rotating column of destruction that maintained F5 intensity for most of its 75 mile path across Alabama. This tornado had a duration of over two hours long, one of the longest track tornadoes of the outbreak. The tornado's size, length, and duration meant that its devastating core affected a much larger area than typical tornadoes, leaving virtually no part of Gwynn or the surrounding areas untouched. The storm had approached Gwynn from the southwest, its massive size visible to residents even in the darkness. 
Those who witnessed its approach described an otherworldly sight, continuous lightning illuminating a wall of debris stretching across the entire horizon, accompanied by a roar so loud it drowned out all other sound. The tornado had completely obliterated Gwen's business district. The bank building, constructed of solid brick and steel, had been reduced to a pile of rubble. The high school, built to withstand Alabama's severe weather, was totally destroyed. Its gymnasium roof found several miles away. Even massive industrial equipment at the local manufacturing plant had been twisted into unrecognizable shapes or carried away entirely. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of the Gwyn Tornado was the community's response to the devastation. Despite losing 28 residents and seeing their entire town virtually wiped off the map, the survivors immediately began the process of rebuilding. Within days of the tornado, temporary shelters were erected and plans were being made to reconstruct not just individual homes and businesses, but the entire community. Beyond the meteorological records and damage statistics, Super Outbreak was fundamentally a human tragedy played out on an unprecedented scale. The storms didn't just destroy buildings and infrastructure, they shattered lives, families, and entire communities in ways that would resonate for generations. The psychological impact of experiencing an F5 tornado is difficult to comprehend for those who haven't lived through such an event. Survivors constantly describe a sense of helplessness that goes beyond normal fear. The realization that the most fundamental assumptions about safety and shelter have suddenly become meaningless. Well-built homes that had weathered decades of storms were reduced to splinters in seconds. Safe rooms became death traps when entire buildings were lifted and thrown. The 1974 super outbreak had left entire communities in disarray. Many residents would describe symptoms we later know as PTSD. Children were particularly vulnerable, both physically and psychologically. Many young tornado survivors developed chronic anxiety disorders and phobias that persisted well into adulthood. The sound of wind, the sight of dark clouds, or even weather reports on television could trigger panic attacks. Some children refused to sleep alone for years, terrified that another tornado might strike while they were unaware. More than 50 years later, the 1974 super outbreak remains the gold standard for tornado outbreaks in terms of sheer violence and destruction. While other outbreaks have produced more individual tornadoes, none have matched the concentrated fury of the super outbreaks F4 and F5 storms. The 1974 outbreak is known as the most violent in world history. Ted Fujita, nicknamed Mr. Tornado for his groundbreaking work done on surveying and rating tornado damage, initially gave an F6 rating to the Xenia, Ohio tornado. His findings said that the sheer destruction and observable wind speeds were the greatest he's seen since the Lubbock, Texas F5 tornado in 1970. He was quoted saying that the Xenia and Lubbock tornadoes had inconceivable amounts of damage. Later, he would state that he considered giving an F6 rating to the Gwynn, Alabama tornado too. After further honing of his legendary Fujita scale, he capped all ratings at F5 being the highest possible rating. The super outbreak marked a turning point in American severe weather preparedness and response. The unprecedented destruction exposed critical weaknesses in warning systems, emergency procedures, and building practices that led to significant improvements in the years that followed. In the immediate aftermath, the National Weather Service began implementing new technologies and procedures designed to provide better tornado warnings. The development of Doppler radar systems was accelerated, eventually leading to the sophisticated warning networks that we have today. Emergency management procedures were overhauled at local, state, and federal levels with new emphasis on pre-positioned resources and coordinated response plans. The outbreak also influenced building codes and construction practices in tornado-prone regions. The complete destruction of well-built structures by F5 winds demonstrated the need for reinforced safe rooms and improved building techniques. While no structure can withstand a direct hit from the most violent tornadoes, modern construction methods have significantly improved survival rates in lesser storms. But for the communities struck by these F5 tornadoes, recovery was a process that took years or even decades. 
Xenia slowly rebuilt, eventually becoming a model for tornado recovery and preparedness. Tanner, virtually erased from existence, struggled to maintain its identity as a distinct community. Many residents relocated permanently, and the town never fully recovered its pre-tornado population. Quinn's recovery was perhaps the most remarkable, as the community used the devastation as an opportunity to completely redesign and rebuild. The new Gwyn incorporated many lessons learned from the tornado with improved building codes, better emergency shelters, and enhanced warning systems. The 1974 super outbreak stands as a stark reminder of nature's awesome destructive potential. In the span of 18 hours, the atmosphere demonstrated its ability to generate forces capable of literally reshaping the landscape and forever altering thousands of lives. The seven F5 tornadoes that struck communities like Xenia, Tanner, and Gwyn represent some of the most violent weather events ever documented. Yet perhaps the most important lesson from the super outbreak is humility in the face of natural forces. Despite all our technological advances and improved understanding, tornadoes remain fundamentally unpredictable and uncontrollable phenomena. Thank you all for tuning in. Please like and subscribe and let me know what other topics you'd like me to cover. This has been Deadliest Disasters.